Hey everybody. Um, still in the process of working out a bunch of Malifaux figures and um, trying to come up with more uh, unique bases for them, sort of to match the type of figures that they are. And I'm working on uh, a couple of these guys. It's like a mad scientist doctor guy. Uh, McMorning, I think his name is. And he's got some... Let me show you the card. It's actually painted. A little... Frankenstein figures, but uh, I want to do a, a stone floor, sort of like something you'd see in a castle. So I had some of these I bought years ago, which I was going to use, but the problem is the big Frankenstein guy has a big base. So I decided to just make my own that looks just like this. First step is you got your slot of base here, and you need to fill in the slot. Um, this is filled in with uh, epoxy putty that's already been dried. Uh, that's very important because later we're going to uh, cover this with putty and you know press down into it. And if that's not here, as you press down into the putty, because there's less resistance where the gap is, it'll it'll div it down. So you need to have a totally flat surface at the same height. So otherwise, simply you can't just put a piece of plastic over to co to uh, cover it up because then. Again, it's going to be at a different height. So, first step, contra putty, fill in the gap. Second step, more contra putty. And just smoosh it on. And it doesn't have to be totally perfectly flat since we're going to be doing stone. So you can have a little rise to it if you want. I really want to do it concave though, but well, maybe that'll work too. I don't know. I'm not an expert at this. This is something I just came up with about an hour ago. So I got a nice edge here. Alright. That is good to go. Just got a little water on my finger. Try to rub away all the little fingerprints I just left in it. Number two is getting one of these. This is a very expensive and important piece of the modeling box. It's called a rock. And we're just going to give this thing some rocky texture here. Try to decide what side is best here. Hopefully you can find a rock. If not, you can use other things, whatever you have that's textured around to do this. You know, you could actually maybe use sandpaper too. Alright, well you get the idea of that. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit more off camera. But after this, the next step is to put the base off to the side somewhere and let it harden for about an hour. Because right now it's just a bit too soft to go into the next step. Alright, uh, the putty's hardened up a little bit. It's been about an hour. And you want to let it harden up because uh, you don't want it too soft at this stage. Since we're going to be pressing into it, um, you don't want it to deform too much but it is still soft and we still can carve into it. Now I'm going to do the uh, the stone tiles or blocks, whatever you want to call them, so I need to do all the grout lines and you need to find something that's uh, the width that you want the tiles. This is just a bit of uh, styrene trash that I had lying around. It'll make a good width. 
So just, you don't want to press too hard. Just hold it in place. And I'm using the back of my hobby knife to get the lines. And, you know, use whatever you want. You don't want to, you don't need to cut into the putty. Also, I'm not trying to drag the knife. I'm trying more of, like, pressing it down so I don't end up pulling it. There's a little bit of divot from the styrene, but we're going to fix that in a minute. Don't need these two, these uh, lines too deep because we're gonna put a wash over it eventually. So we just need it deep enough so it takes a nice black ink wash. Uh, just keep moving down the line. Alright, now that I have lines going in one direction, I need to stagger my little stone bricks here. So I'm just putting this in a random spot. I want to make sure they're perpendicular with the other lines. Just eyeballing the best I can. And I'll start breaking up the tiles here. I'm just doing every other line of putty. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna do. Let me see here. I think that's I'm trying to decide how. I think I want these little stone tiles. Let's do about there. Alright, I got one set done, so now I need to go in the middle to get the other set. Let me make a little mark here so I know where the middle is. So we can stagger the stones do the exact same thing on the other part here. There we go, got all the stones. Now there is a bit of uh, dips in them. From where the putty uh, kind of got pulled by the action of the knife, so I just got to go back and reinforce some of these lines. So, I got the lines looking pretty good. Now, some of the texture did get kind of rubbed away, so I'm just going to go back again with my super expensive, high quality texturing tool here. I'm 
you notice I use different portions of the rock here just to change up the texture. It's not looking all the same. So now, last step is I want to add a few cracks in the stone. So I'm going to use the front of the knife right now. And uh, if there's any little bad spots that didn't come out that well, you can use this technique to sort of hide them. See here I got a bit of a double line, I didn't cut it right, so... I'm going to carve in here a bit. Try to hide that mistake. Let's see if we can make a little loose. Got a rock in there. There we go. Alright, so added all my little cracks there, looking pretty good. And um, basically all I did is just go through, add some cracks, did a bit more adjusting with the shape of all the uh, spaces in between the little flagstones here. It's all done very easily, just keep going back and forth so you like it. If you want to add some bit more texture here and there, go ahead. Try not to push too hard because now I'm going to, if I do, I'm going to end up uh, pushing the putty together and losing my lines again. Also, if you have any little burrs, you can still clean up the putty with water. It doesn't work as well as it did when it's softer, but you can still do a little bit of cleanup. Oops. And I also remember the edges of the base, clean up any stuff that might have gotten pushed over. Alright, so that's it. A couple of different uh, looking bases here. One for small figure, one for large figure. So very easy to make. Hopefully you give it a try. Okay, while we're on the subject of making rock bases, I wanted to show you another way you can do it. Uh, this here is two-part molding putty. Uh, this is by Lumilite if your local hobby store carries uh, resin casting products. Uh, more than likely it's by Lumilite. And um, they have this stuff here. What it is, it's very similar to epoxy putty. It's a two-part uh, putty that you mix together and um, it forms sort of a Play-Doh-like consistency and what you can do is press that into some surface that you want to make a mold of and then pull it off and you end up with something like this it's flexible and allows you to cast different pieces of uh, whatever you want to make this here is a, a mold I made from a, a rock uh, terrain piece and here's another one I made. Uh, this one is from some uh, Linka um, walls. Uh, Linka is a series, they make molds and that you uh, pour in plaster and then you can make like a little tiny brick wall 
And what I did was I, take a mold, I took a mold of one of the brick walls, walls made from the Lenka mold. Yeah. So I used this in the past to make some bases for World War II figures. There's one. There you go. That's, ooh, that was a badly cast one, but you can see the texture there. And you can use this stuff to cast anything, any sort of texture you want for your bases or other items. It makes fun so you can make a whole bunch of different bases and um, make them all the same way. All right, so here's a, a base. We got it covered with the contour putty. This is not dried an hour. This is still fresh. And we have our mold here. Now you want a little bit of a release agent. Water works fairly well, but what I find actually works really good for a quick release agent is um, super glue accelerant. Just give it a little spritz, not too much, and that is pretty slick. So that'll prevent the mold from sticking to the putty. Actually, it'd be easier if I do it this way. Put the mold down. Let me see here what part I want to cast. Let's do it right here. I'm going to press straight down. Don't turn it. Oops. Dropped it. And there we go. Got a nice little texture here. Now I can let this dry. Or, see, I see I got a little bit of a blank spot here. So if you don't like it, the good thing is, you can just do it again. Let's just try another side here of the uh, mold. Push down a little bit firmer on the edges here. And there we go. Now I just need my wax carving tool. And do any necessary cleanup along the edges. This one came out pretty clean, so I don't have to do much here. So you just let this dry, and then you attach your base, and you're ready to go. And here's one figure that I almost have done using the same technique. This is another uh, Malifaux weird figure. This one is called Hans the Sharpshooter, I believe. So you can see right here. Nice base, all one piece, quickly cast. And I'm going to be filling that in with uh, some sort of water effect. I don't know how I'm doing it yet. Oh, one other thing, if I almost forgot. Um, while we're on the subject of uh, doing the tile bases, I wanted to show you another way you can do that. Um, if once you put the putty down, for the rock bases, you uh, can leave it fairly rough, but if you press it down and get it really smooth, this is a dry one for another project, but if you get it very smooth by pressing down on it with some sort of flat surface and sort of just roll it out and make sure you get all the smooth stuff while it's still while the putty's still soft you can make tile bases like this guy here or this one now both of these were made in the exact same way that the um, the rock base was made except for I just started with a much smoother surface and then just like the other base I just I use this as a template Except for staggering the bricks, I just used them to make square tiles. So I went like here and cut, and here and cut, and here, and then here, here, and here. So then you do that, pan it up, and you get a really nice tile base. Alright, that is it. Thanks for watching.